What's good? Welcome back. So today I wanted to come out to the mountains for sunrise, shoot a little bit, try and get some moody conditions, and show you how I edit Instagram Reels. Over the past month or so, I've been making these little 15 second vertical videos for Instagram actually going out and shooting vertically, turning the camera sideways. And I wanna show you just how I approach editing like a short little vibey 15 second video for the gram. So I've been kind of driving and walking up and down these roads for the past like hour or two at least, just looking for these little pockets of fog. And it's kind of frustrating because I'll see a foggy spot, go there, and then by the time I get there and get my camera set up, it's already moved off somewhere else. So it's like a slightly frustrating process, but also very fun and rewarding at the same time. Everything's great on the Super 8. I didn't mean for that to rhyme, but we'll go with it. And now the fog is clearing, so we'll probably be heading home soon, but this was a pretty damn successful little video mission, and I'm excited to get home, import this stuff, and show you how I edit it. So let's go do that. So now it's time to dive into the edit, but first I want to briefly talk to you a bit about the sponsor of this video, which is Monday.com. You've probably heard of Monday.com before as a platform for working with a team, but I want to show you how I've been using it to structure my workflow as a solo creator. So this is my main like project overview board, and it's kind of a big at a glance view of everything I'm working on at the moment. It includes relevant information for each project, like the client that I'm working with, the deadline so I don't miss that, and the type of project, and I can also easily update each one to show my progress on that given project. And when I am working with someone else, like for example to get someone's help shooting a video, I can very easily just add them right here and loop them into all of the information for that project. And finally, I can very easily link to other assets for each project like the script or a mood board, which is something I'm usually making for these larger videos. And that's what's great about Monday.com is that it works very seamlessly with a bunch of other platforms you might be using for your projects and it just provides so many different options for tailoring it to your specific process. I've used several different workflow management platforms and this one is by far my favorite. So if you're interested in trying Monday.com out for yourself, there will be a link in the description where you can start a one month free trial. That being said, now we are back in trusty Premiere Pro and ready to put together this little 15 second vertical 
video. So you can see here, I've already gone through and done selects for this entire shoot. So I've gone through all of the footage and just cut out the good usable parts. And usually I'll take all of this and try to get several different reels out of it. So there's this footage at the start, which I actually already made one using these clips, but this has kind of a unique look to it. It's very kind of blue and orange. It's a little darker, has a different setting. Whereas then when we get further in to a different location, this is much more gray and foggy and has a lot more flat colors to it. This could make for a completely separate little video. I've already made two videos using the footage we're working with today. I'm gonna make another one for you in this video and then I could probably even squeeze a fourth one out of it later on. So I'm really trying to maximize how many little moments I can get out of a given shoot. And the goal when I'm creating these is just that, not necessarily to tell a story, but to capture more of a moment and kind of just take this one little snippet of that shoot and place the viewer in the scene. There are plenty of people out there who are doing this way better than I am. I'll link some of my favorites in the description so you can check them out and get inspired. But this has been a fun thing to play around with over the last couple months. So let's dive in. So the first thing I need to do here is create a new composition separate from those selects that I will then drag selects into. So I'm just going to create a new sequence. I'll call this foggy road reel. I don't know. I'll make sure that this is vertical 4K, so 2160 by 3840, and then we are ready to go. And you can see I've moved around my Premiere windows a bit, just so we have this nice big vertical uh, viewer on the side rather than it being tiny in the top corner. So next, I'm just going to grab my selects timeline, drag it down below my main timeline, so now we can just drag whatever clips we want to use up into our main sequence. The first step for me is to decide on a simple concept, not quite a story, but a general idea and something to structure the video and then choose a few clips to match it. In this case, I really like how the fog and the empty road kind of create this vibe of like loneliness and uncertainty. And I want to lean into that and create this visual that's almost like we've maybe gotten lost and can't see exactly where to go on these curvy mountain roads. So I think I'm actually going to skip over any of these clips of cars driving and rather use shots that are just of the empty road and my car parked. All right, so here I've gone through and picked out all of the clips that I think could possibly work for this sequence. And I'm gonna keep slimming it down from here and end up with four or five clips that make up this video. So you can see we've got a little bit of just shots of the location of the trees, nice empty shot of the road, shot of the car parked. I really like this shot. This one's definitely gonna make it in. More shots of empty roads, walking on this little wall next to the road, more shots of the car parked, more walking on the wall, and then some more empty roads. So typically I will try to start on an establishing shot just to give you an idea of the entire scene and then move into more of what the story is or more details of that particular scene. So I think in this case, this opening establishing shot is going to be a few different shots of these empty roads. So I'm just gonna make sure these are at the start of the timeline. So this clip is a good one. Maybe this one as well. And then there are a couple others towards the end here. All of these could make for good establishing shots for this particular sequence. I'm not a huge fan of this shot. It's not quite as foggy because I shot it later in the day. So I don't think it's quite gonna match with the other clips. So I'm just gonna go ahead and cut that one out. So I think after those few establishing shots, the next move should be to reveal the car. I think this clip is the obvious winner for the first reveal shot of the car. So I'll just go ahead, and drag that over so it's next on the timeline. And then I'm thinking we follow that up with a slightly closer shot of the car. And I'm between these two. It's a tough call, but I think overall this clip is a little foggier, so it aids more to the atmosphere that we're trying to create. 
And it also shows these tall trees on the left, which we have another clip of to use later on. So I'll just go ahead and cut this shot and drag this one over. And finally, this shot of me walking along this wall, I don't think it adds too much to the vibe or to the storyline here. So I'm just gonna go ahead and cut that one. And instead, we will move on to this clip pushing over the wall to reveal these trees over the edge. And now that I've got all of those clips ordered on the timeline, it's time to start cutting them down to a 15 second little nugget. And here there's a lot of emphasis on flow and making sure that we cut these in such a way that they are not only you know efficient and snappy 15 seconds long, but that they flow very well and very smoothly together that they create something that you could easily watch over and over again. So with longer videos, I'm usually cutting based on music or based on the action of the shot, cutting where it makes sense. Whereas here, I'm more just cutting where it feels natural. All right, so now I've got these all cut up in such a way that they flow somewhat naturally together. Hopefully you can see a lot of the way I do this is by overlapping clips. I can easily like push them around by a couple frames and see where the cuts work best. But once I've got that locked in, I'll just drag all of these down so that they are all on one layer. And you can see these are just cut in such a way that we have a nice flow from each clip to the next. And the next step after this will be stabilizing each of these clips. So I shoot these entirely handheld. Maybe there will be a tripod shot here or there, but in this case, it's all handheld. And I want it to feel nice and smooth, very drifty and atmospheric. So I'm just going to use warp stabilizer on each of these to smooth out any little tiny shakes and inconsistencies that there might be. Next up, I'll do a bit of keyframe animation to keep the motion of the clips consistent throughout. So you can see this first clip has a tilting up motion, whereas the two clips after it do not. So I'm gonna compensate for that on the first one so it matches. Also, this clip just doesn't have a lot of motion and it's between two shots that are pushing in. So I'll add a digital push in so that it stays consistent. This just helps out with the flow to make the video that much more seamless and flowy. And now that we've done that, we can move on to the color grade. And this is the same color grading that you've seen on my channel before. I'll link some of those videos in the description and in the cards but I usually go just a little more stylized on these reels just to grab a little more attention and go for something a little more fun and punchy. And there we go. Now the color grade is all set. My backlight died on me while I was doing that, but it actually made it a little easier not having a bright light shining right in my face. And now the last visual detail that I'll add before the sound design is the classic glow in the highlights. I've actually made this into a preset called Diffused Highlights. Slap this on, it's got a Luma key and a Gaussian blur. This is a technique I've talked about in videos in the past. It basically just keys out these brightest parts of the image. You can adjust it to get a little more. Then I would just set this to a lighten blend mode and you can see it's just adding a nice little bit of blur and pop to those highlights. So I'll just go through and add this effect to every shot just to give it a little more of that stylized look and make it look a little more dreamy and interesting. And finally, I'll dive into sound design, which is the final piece of the puzzle for creating an interesting kind of dreamy atmosphere and placing the viewer in this scene. I'll start out by building out a nice ambient sound. So just several tracks of background noise to build out the atmosphere. In this case, that'll probably be like some howling wind, a bit of wind in the trees, rustling the branches, maybe some rain dripping out of the trees, some birds and just general forest ambience in the background. And I think I might add this nice kind of echoey sound. It's almost like cave ambience of like water dripping and echoing off of the rocks. I think that adds not necessarily realism, but some cool atmosphere to a scene like this and conveys that desolation and emptiness. Then I'll go through and add in detail sounds for different elements of each shot. 
So right here, I would add the sound of these blades of grass moving around to transition this shot in, adding in the sound of the car motor and the car wipers, maybe a sound as we go over the wall and over these leaves. And finally, I'll toss in some atmospheric sounds, so like whooshes and maybe the sound of a radio saying a weather forecast in the background, things you wouldn't necessarily hear in the scene, but that add to the vibe and also help transition between shots and create that flow once again. We're looking up at potential thunderstorms moving. Storm bringing several inch limited visibility at higher elevations moving into the afternoon. But that brings us to the end of this video. I hope you enjoyed it and learned something new from it. I definitely had a good time making this one, showing you all this technique. And if you wanna see the final product of this video, as well as all of the other reels I've been putting out lately, make sure to go drop a follow on Instagram at Aiden Robbins to see all of those. If you wanna download the raw footage I used here, as well as get access to extended longer tutorials and some other monthly perks, you can consider becoming a channel member. There'll be a little more information about how you can sign up for that in the description. Thanks again to monday.com for sponsoring today's video. Keep creating and I'll see you in the next one.